now we're downstairs. And... Okay. So what I've done is that I have two holes set and I haven't run the screws down tight. And I figured out upstairs, I had let them, I, I just let them, I left them loose so you can move the pole back and forth to set my, um, to set the vertical of the plumb. But I realized that that kind of allowed that post to wobble a little bit when I was welding them together. And I was really fighting myself. So I went back old school, just like simple framing. And I used um, used wedges, the wood wedges underneath here and set that plumb and then ran the screws down tight enough where they didn't move. And then I was able to set my, my uh, top rail. And this is when I was working upstairs and it was fast. It was so much faster and it worked out really well. So I'm gonna do that today. So first thing I need to do is set all these um, true and straight and plumb because if you look down the line here you're like well a couple of them a little bit out but overall it's not too bad and what I'm working with is you know you have the concrete and it's right on the edge and you want you know it has a little bit of slope so that when the water migrates here it picks up a little speed to go over the edge so I'm not working on a plane that's perfectly flat and then my post you know, I'm only welded them by hand. They're not in a jig or anything. So they might be off ever so slightly, but when you take that 40 inches out, if you're off just ever so slightly, you know, you might be out over an inch by the time you get to 40 inches. So with the combination of uneven concrete and my, uh, I wouldn't even say novice welding skills for being perpendicular on those posts, they're a little bit out of adjustment, but that's what the wedges are for. So I slide them there, set all that. So that is what I'm going to work with today. I have all my posts are all leveled up now and I've brought down my angle pieces that I've already pre-cut so you can see this railing goes to here and then it'll make a 45 there now I've got a little bit of a caveat here this post is really close to the edge and so what I figured out to do is that I will make a piece now we'll see if I can hold this at the same time. We'll see if I can do it. We'll go just like this. Ta-da! There we go. And then my landing mat, of course, will run right across the face of that. And uh, should look pretty good. So, didn't, uh, when we laid this out, forgot about it. Could have scooted it in. But overall, the nice thing is, is that this welds right into this beam, which makes this railing super, super strong because now it's welded to the beam. So if you lean on this and lean out, it's connected to this beam. So it should be really strong. So overall, uh, a little silver lining, I guess. Now, let's go down over here. And this is where I'm going to be working next. So I'm going to do the two corners first. And this one was a really hard cut to make but i got it dialed in so i got a 45 coming up and over right but my next 45 is from that angle to that angle so that angle to this one is perpendicular in the different axis so i have it cut and i just fit it and it fits perfect so now i'm going to do all my grinding and we will start welding this corner and then I'll go to that corner and then those pieces that are in between are just square cuts so I'll put one together put another one together and then figure out my third piece of pipe which will be right here and I'll figure that one and we'll clamp them and hopefully if everything goes well we will be running nice and true and straight so fingers are crossed so here we go
Okay, the prep is done for this corner. I had the piece set up there. And so now I'll lay out my blanket. I don't really need the blanket down here below, but the splatter and the slag from the welder makes little black dots on the concrete. And so I thought, well, that's probably a good idea. We're trying to make keep the concrete as clean as possible. So now I'm going to weld some spot weld there and then we'll check all of our dimensions spot weld over there and then check those dimensions and spot weld here and that way we have a nice right angle in two different dimensions and hopefully we'll be set up as we make it we head on down the line here Okay, the welding's done for that section right there. Take my hat off. I'm not going to get up close so you guys can grade my welds, but because I haven't ground them yet, but that's what they look like. They're pretty fat, but oh well. They're really, really sturdy, and uh, that's what a grinder's for, right? All right, well, I made it to the end of the day, so we'll uh, show you the work that I have completed. And we'll turn around here. Everything is welded up for the railing. Started putting in the landing mat. And uh, it's looking good. Looking really good. So I think it's going to turn out really nice. I wanted to show you guys a little bit of detail about how I'm putting this landing mat on here by myself. They weigh, they weigh close to probably 80 pounds, 100 pounds a piece. They're very cumbersome. So what I figured out how to use was my ratchet straps and it works really well to hold them and so what I did was I used my C-clamps here to set them on there to hold it while I put the ratchet straps in there and so now I put the ratchet straps on there and that's what holds them and it allows me a side to side movement up and down and I can really dial it in and so what I do is I'll weld the panels together and make sure I'm running about as true and straight as possible. They're super old and they're kind of bent up, but I kind of have to either fudge it one way or the other just to make sure that it lines up. So what I'll do is I'll weld three of them, three panels together, and uh, keep my sight lines nice and straight, and then I'll weld them to the post. But I should write a book about how to build with ratchet straps because I can't tell you how many times I've used them to hold things. And they work really well because, you know, they have just a little incremental movement and so you can really dial it in. So the fog and the water is so crystal smooth. Almost looks like a Bob Ross painting, doesn't it? With the reflection off the glass off the water. I have finally finished the railing. So let's show you guys a little bit of the work. It rained last night and so uh, I was uh, do some zooming up here. So let this rust a little bit and I'll put the same stuff on there so that it'll turn it uh, Turn it back to uh, the, the black primer. So I'll do that there. And of course I'll do it down here. I'll let that dry out. The chemical reaction works a lot better if it has a little bit of rust on it. And the more rust that it has on there, the better it seals it in. So I'm going to let that sit for another couple of days and get a little bit more rust on it. But overall, my goodness, looks really, really good. We'll go down here. So you guys can see it. I'm going to step down here. Oh, sorry if the wind's blowing too much. 
but that's what it looks like. There's that section I was telling you about where my uh, my column, I forgot to uh, bring that out just a little bit, but <clears throat> it seems to work out just fine because I was able to weld it into that column and it makes the side of the railing even more stronger because it has another section to hold on to, to weld into. So, I mean, it is ridiculous. I can't even get it to move. So when that happened, then I thought, well, let's make another one here. So I had a piece of pipe left. So I did the same thing here. So I have all four sections coming in there. And then I welded them to go around the other side. So I'm not in the shadow. There we go. So then I welded it into here. And then I'll put that same stuff on it to, to do that. And then we'll go back and we'll paint these. I think I'm going to paint those black. Um, because they're just primer right now. Okay, one item I wanted to go over with you is my little welder that I bought from Harbor Freight. And I, this is not a paid advertisement through Harbor Freight or anything. It's just that I bought this thing for like $180. I think it was less than $200. And I have welded all of this railing with this little guy. It is a MIG Flux 125 and it has the wire spool feeder in there and i'm using the 0 0.035 wire and it has all of the setup of how how thick your metal is it'll go up to 3 16 inch steel and it is uh it's been wonderful i mean just wonderful and it plugs into the 110 and I didn't, I just used it. I didn't have anything else on the circuit while I did it. And on a 100 foot cord, and it was a 12 2 contractor cord, so the heavy duty cord, and it didn't pop the breaker one time. It didn't even get hot, it didn't even cycle. Uh, and there was sex, there was times when I was welding for two to four minutes at a time, and it never cycled uh, because it got too hot or anything like that. I just couldn't believe it. I have run four spools of wire through it. Let's see how long. I don't know how long that is. How many linear feet of wire that it doesn't say on the spool top. But it never failed. It never failed and it laid down really, really good strong welds. I couldn't believe it. But for $180, I mean this is, it was wonderful. The coolest thing is, is it only weighs 15 pounds, right? So I can move it back and forth and forth and back and, and hook all my pieces. Um, you know, some of the reviews on it said that this clamper, which looks like a jumper cable clamp, you know, to change that out and get a different one. Maybe so, but it never really, it, it always seemed to work perfect. I never had any problems at all. And some of the welds that it laid down, like let's go over and look at this corner one. I was able to lay down perfect beads in there and then go back and grind it smooth and I'm really really happy with it I mean you look at all of these and it did really well so if you guys are in the market for an inexpensive welder that really really worked well I strongly recommend this one from Harbor Freight. I am just blown away that I have done roughly 450 linear feet of piping and then the mats and it never failed. I just couldn't believe it. And for $180 and the spools, I can't remember, I want to say they're like maybe $20 a piece. Uh, I can't remember right off the top of my head, but um, overall, it did really well. So that is going to be it for this episode. You guys make sure and like and subscribe. We're going to be moving on. I got word that our siding people are supposed to be here next week. Fingers crossed. 